Laura. Please wake up. Wake up, Laura. Come on, come on. Awesome, Laura. Glad to see you among the living. Uh, okay, now, I really hope they did nothing horrible to you whilst, whilst you were unconscious, but... Uh, let's be realistic, they probably did. But don't worry, Lara, we're gonna get our revenge on them. So, hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 2, this is Organism 115 speaking. And uh, in this particular part, we're gonna try and uh, attempt some little jailbreak with, uh, with Lara, really. And the way we're going to do that is by using a switch in our own cell that opens up the, the way out. I mean, Natla's mines were much more elaborate than this. And the reason I'm mentioning Natla's mines is this. We lost all our guns. However, we still get to keep all our flares, health packs and all the ammunition which is going to carry over from, uh, from the state we left the opera house in. Mind you, as soon as you press the switch, the door will open, however, to make things not entirely easy, it's on a timer, but it's extremely easy to just go around like this. Now, as you might have noticed, a couple of armed goons are headed our way, so we're gonna need Lara's pistols to defend ourselves. And if you remember, the last place we left them at was the plane, so we need to get on top of the plane. But first, let's set up a little trap, which, unfortunately, will not kill the thug. They are immune to the damage from the barrels. However, they will still hurt Lara, which is completely utterly unfair. Basically, unlike the windows at our cells, these windows, they're not static objects, so they can be broken. Not by jumping into them, but um, by utilizing our friend's rifle over there. So he shot the window for us, and by doing a running jump, you can reach the top of the plane, reach the trapdoor over here and just get your hands on the guns as soon as possible. So yeah, this is basically a sort of a work around uh, around a couple of swimming corridors, that sort of thing that we can go through, but I don't suggest you do it purely because of the amount of damage you receive by trying that out. Okay, we're back where we started, well, where we left our cell really. And what was very cozy, and um, we're gonna have very fond memories of it, it's time to run. Even better, hide underwater so that the bastards can't reach us. Yeah, they really can't swim too well. As in, at all. Now, we can see it's a lovely jade dragon behind the ventilator over there, but as you can imagine, just like in Opera House, these can shred Lara to pieces if she's not careful. And basically, these can suck you in even from a huge distance because we're in the war. But these barrels over here, they serve as a sort of a milestone from which distance you're safe from the ventilator's influence. So just swim around them if you want to be completely safe. And keep to the sides. They can't really suck you in. Yeah, because it takes uh, three squares. But this is the fourth one in the very corner. Okay, awesome. So we're going to reach that Jade Dragon in some time by opening this trapdoor beneath us. But first, we'll just swim forward. Yeah, I think actually in Tomb Raider 4 you can open certain panels by just pressing Control key or something like that. It's a real mindfuck after playing Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3. Okay, and the way we're going to open that particular trapdoor is by activating this lever over here. So you can just head straight for the secret, but I'm not going to do that yet, because we're going to end up in the un well underwater once again. First, we have some business to take care of here. Don't worry, it's not going to take long. That statue has been there for decades, probably. It's gonna wait for us a bit longer. Now, what I'm actually curious about is that this is an offshore rig, but it's not an oil rig. There's no real oil to be had here, I think. The, the whole purpose of the rig is basically a sort of a base of exploration for Marco Bartoli's gang to um to basically be looking for a shipwreck of the Maria Doria and a certain key item. But I wonder if they built this brick or if they just found it and took over. Because I can't really imagine why they would build the ins entire place just for some underwater exploration. I mean, that'd be completely unnecessary. 
But yeah, we're not gonna learn much more about this place than that. Either way, it's full of bloodthirsty cultists. Or maybe they can't pe they are kind people, but they have their orders. Either way, uh, we're gonna have to kill every single one of them we encounter, and in this world through, hopefully, there's gonna be everyone. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's our first secret. Lovely rewarding chime. Now let's just go swim through the tunnel to reach the upper part once again. And yeah, what we did by crawling inside the plane, we still haven't found our pistols, but we found a switch that deactivates the uh, engine. I'm not actually sure why it was activated in the first place. I mean, the plane is going to stay in there for a while. Oh well. Guess they were really careless or something. Okay, and really. <laughs> so this way takes a bit longer, but it also is kind of um, helps you encounter the seek the first secret and also you will not take any damage from those bastards early on so I prefer to do it like this even though I know there is a sort of a short workaround and yeah just reach the platform it will drop and we're on the other side with our lovely guns this plane is so uh -huh. empty and it looks like nothing from the cutscene after the opera house it's really strange that way that's because we were in the lower cargo hall, I guess. Huh, who knows. Either way, um, yeah, let's go back to our cell. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you that we really can't shoot through those windows. As I said, they're a static object, a dynamic one. Yep, nothing. But there are thugs over here. So basically these guys are just the thugs we've seen in Venice and Opera House and Bartoli's hideout, just have a different skin. They carry a baton, not a baseball bat or a wrench or anything. Whereas this guy over here is a new enemy and carries an AK rifle. Hard to say if it's 47 or one of the modern, the modern models. Either way, they can't take much damage. Actually, I think they take even less damage than the snipers from Venice, which is fine by me. Because these guys can be extremely dangerous. They can get into a crouching firing position and they will just not stop shooting. Do, 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 do. your health just goes down. It's insane. So, yeah, when they appear on the scene they seem kind of confused, that's when you kill them as soon as you can, otherwise you're in for it. And what we picked up is, uh, yeah, it's not actually inflatable boat, no, it's a yellow pass card. And um, we're basically just gonna use that over here to open up a door. I believe there are gonna be three different pass cards. Yellow, red and green, I think. I'm not sure there's gonna be blue. And we can take a look at the camera screen to see some generic yellow corridor that's not really in the game. There you have it. And we can shoot through these now. <laughs> oh my god, it feels great. Okay, awesome. And if you're getting annoyed with the alarm, rejoice, because we're gonna turn it off. There we go. Okay, awesome. Now, basically you can go left and right from here, but there's no point in going to the left yet, we're gonna need another card. We're gonna get that card by going to the right over here, although that in itself is gonna be a bit of an adventure. Now, be careful. A thug is gonna come out from that door. A door that's gonna close as soon as we approach it. And another thug comes from behind. Oh my goodness, this is very scary and stressful. Okay, Lara's alternating fire saved us. Now, this area behind the door over here, you could sort of use a corner glitch to reach it. However, this is actually an area from the next level. We're not gonna get there until the next level, really. So this is just an empty copy of that particular corridor. Yeah, so there's no real point of uh, occupying yourself with whatever the hell is behind the door, how to get it. Don't worry. Now yeah, uh, I think this is the first time in Tomb Raider series that Lara was able to open a door by just using the action key. And that click is just very satisfying. I love these doors. Okay, and a third duck is over here. Which I'm really happy about because this guy will drop a large health pack as well. Awesome. Okay. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure at this point where this offshore rig is actually located, what ocean it is. But I'm gonna check, and if I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna include it in the video information. 
because I put the geographical region in parentheses in, uh, behind every level in Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2. So if I'm going to find out where this, where actually this offshore rig is located, I'm going to include that information once I'll upload the video. If not, I apologize and I failed that. But I'm not going to stop until I find it. I'm sorry, I can't really turn on my badass voice right now. Oh well, some other time maybe. Uh -huh. Okay, now I really love this bunkhead room because we're going to be finding three packs of automatic pistol clips and automatic pistols themselves. And I believe they're going to be... Oh yeah, there's a harpoon with three harpoons. Well, harpoon bundles. That actually, uh, that was loaded with one, so that's basically three times four that's um, 12 harpoon shots. Now, you might be very tempted to try it out on, well, anyone really. But the thing is, there are going to be a couple of very tricky underwater enemies in Tomb Raider 2. Most of them, I'm going to do my best to lure them out and just shoot them from a, from a dry shore. Because every weapon in this game is more effective than harpoon. However, in cases where that will not be possible, I'm just going to employ the harpoon. And the thing is, the ammunition for Harpoon is probably the most rare in the entire game and it deals very little damage as well. So basically I'm just going to be saving this ammunition as much as I can for those impossible to kill from shore enemies. Yeah, there are going to be some really big fish in Tomb Raider 2. Actually very early. Now, uh, yeah. Okay, so this fire room looks kind of puzzling but it's really not. You just have to get one block out of the way so that you have a free reign over the other one. It's really as simple as that. Hmm. Okay. It's probably the most unexciting room in the entire level. And it's really vicious because there is no way for you to figure out that you have to uh, slide from the steep slope to your... well... to your back. You have no way of figuring that out unless it's too late. So that's kind of an annoyance. Many people died, and the distance from which you drop, there's no way you can survive that even from a full health. You know, I do have a tendency of combining these combining these blocks into a two block run up distance, but it doesn't matter. After one square run up distance, more distance is not gonna help Lara to jump any further, so you really only need one. And yeah, use it to reach the ladder and not touch the flames. There is no way for you to extinguish Lara, not in this particular part. Anyway. Okay. Those noises she makes. It's horrible. A bit better in Tomb Raider 3. Well, when I say better, I mean less disgusting. But that's about it. Okay. So that's what I was talking about. We found another key card. This time it's red. And yeah, this is basically uh, what we are after the entire time when we went right instead of left. Maybe uh, switch the turn of the alarm. Now, just don't omit the ladder here. It's not very hidden, but depending on how very dark the game is, let's say you're playing the PS1 version, you might miss it completely and that'd be a shame because there is a second secret over here. And there we go. Okay, sort of a antenna for them to reach signal, communicate, whatever. I don't much care because soon this rig is not going to have any living occupants. Okay, make a running jump or standing jump whilst holding the control key so that Lara will just sort of slide in. This is basically we're back at the plane. Yep. Which is very handy because we want to reach the uh, red pass card slot to put it into. Now, mind you, do not touch that switch again because it's going to turn on the alarm. And I believe that if you press it for the third time, it's actually not going to turn off the alarm. It's just that annoying. And I think I've seen a dog. I believe, yep, that's the only dog in this entire level, but there is an AK guy. Okay, you missed, you bastard dropped something awesome. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Yeah, we didn't really see them use the firing crouching position yet, but trust me, um, <laughs> it's not worth the amount of health we're gonna lose at that point. If, if you can't see that crouching position, uh, it's a reason to rejoice, trust me. Now, I think we're gonna employ our automatic pistols here because this is a very dangerous encounter. New enemy, shotgun wielding one, and a thug. And behind him another thug. Okay, I I believe each one of them has a pickup, which is very convenient. Unfortunately, this triggered another alarm that we can't get rid of. Although maybe if we retrace back to the switch it would turn it off. You know what? I'm actually gonna try it out, let's see. Okay, I'm nearing the switch over here, but the alarm is in a different area. Let's see what happens. So the alarm in this area is back. Oh, we turned it off. Okay, let's see. Let's say we turn it on again. Maybe the alarm in the area we were in is going to be off now. Nope, it does not work like that. Unfortunately, both of them are completely unrelated. Oh well, I tried. Okay. Now, these guys. They're extremely dangerous because it takes a time for the AK rifle guys to get into the crouching position and start firing. Whereas these guys will just blast you with their shotguns, even from a great distance, with utmost precision, and the damage is significant. So I consider these guys even more dangerous. But yeah, I love how they experimented with uh, ranged enemies in Tomb Raider 2, it's kind of cool. But that's also a reason why this game is just so insanely hard to play through without using health packs. So much damage is just a case of blind luck and uh, reloading over and over. I don't think that would make a fun let's play to watch to be honest, but there are some let's play like that on YouTube, so I think I'm actually gonna just, you know, take a look at them to see how the uh, how the authors dealt with the issue. That'd be worth watching. Okay. So yeah, we had to go around the crate twice to move it in the desired direction. And basically, the whole reason of this room will be to reach... There are two cisterns here, we need to reach the second one in the distance and fill it up with water. Like it is right now, but we can't get across quite yet, Lara can't make this jump. And yeah, this is gonna be a pain in the ass for a while. There's really nothing too confusing. You know, even though this is supposed to be a dirty industrial area, the, the bright colors in this level, they always make it feel very fresh. Everything is just blue and yellow, I like it. Okay. Now, there's no time to rest, because these shotgun guys, look, he hit us twice with his shotgun. From all this distance, and dealt significant damage to the bastard. That's about one quarter of our health bar gone just like that. These guys are absolutely insane. First, let's activate the switch. Okay, so we emptied the second system and filled up the first one, which is still not going to help us reach the exit. And the, uh, yeah, we don't have the green card yet, so let's return. We don't have a green card, Lara. You're not going to be able to work in America. Oh no. Okay, let's see. However, by filling up the first system with water, we can actually get across now. We don't have to jump, we can just swim with ease. And mind you, there is a layer here in case you drop here, survive the fall, and save. Just so that you won't get stuck forever in this level, you have a way out. Just saying. And yeah, this is the door with, that we can open up with the green pass card that we don't have yet. However, some of you may have realized what's going on. We're gonna have to that green door actually, well, the green card door helps us get around the first cistern without it being filled by water, and that's pretty much what we're after. We need to fill out, fill the other one with water and get across using that door, and that's pretty much the only challenge in this level left. It's very straightforward. Unlike the uh, military bases in Tomb Raider 3. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm gonna really struggle with my Tomb Raider 3 Let's Play, ignoring the obvious stuff that it's 
for me, it's probably the toughest one. Um, also, they just they design the levels in ways that they want you to take to decide if you want to go through one route or the other, not both, however. It's like the developers work against you there to get all the pickups and all kills. It's insane. But I'm gonna find a way around it, don't you worry. But let's return back to the present. Uh, this area, we're gonna be staying here for a while and we basically want to reach the glass over there and break in and steal a cart. And we can already see two shotgun carrying guys waiting and breathing heavily like they're just having... Uh, I'm not even gonna say it, but it's really disgusting. But first, let's just jump into the war. Close call. One sidestep to the right and we'd be dead. Oh well. Oh, I just realized we haven't saved yet. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, now, you might have heard some weird noises coming from the water. These are actually scuba divers. And that's one down, and there should be another one. And yes, these are underwater enemies, so you might be thinking, well, why not just use a harpoon? As I said, I'm going to be saving harpoon ammunition as much as I can to use it in only in those situations where underwater combat is unavoidable. If I want to get all kills, which I do. Now, there are two scuba divers in this area. We're just going to have to lure the second one out. Whilst we're doing that, however, I believe you, can, you already might have noticed the golden dragon shimmering on... Oh, there he is, the bastard. And yes, these guys can shoot you even whilst you're on the surface. Very vicious. So just move around and they should have trouble hitting you. Okay, both scuba divers are dead and we're being shot at from the shotgun guys up top. This is very nasty. Now, make sure you use your stronger weapon right now, because as soon as you approach the Golden Dragon, two thugs are going to come out of genuinely nowhere and try and club Lara to death. Not appreciated. Okay, one dropped a small health back. Hopefully we'll survive picking up the Golden Dragon. The last secret of the level. Awesome, and we got two packs of Uzis and the Uzis themselves, and we're being still shot at. Okay. We have 1,200 shots of Uzis. And from this point onward in this game... Oh my goodness, look at our health! This is insane! Should I use a large health pack? You know what, let's do it. So from this point onward in the game, you're never gonna lose your guns. Unless you manage to lose them, which you really can't. So yeah. We're gonna keep everything we find forever. Well, forever, until the rest of the game. Then there's going to be the Golden Mask expansion I'll be playing through. Uh, yeah, we're going to start with a new inventory there, but basically until the end of the core Tomb Raider 2, we're going to keep them, so that's sweet. Still, I'm not going to use Uzis just yet, because these enemies still take considerably little damage to, to kill. And yeah, as opposed to those in later levels. Okay, let's make a running jump over here and yeah we're being shot at whilst climbing that's completely and utterly nasty but thankfully this guy was too lazy to fire from his crouching position so uh -huh. his bursts were interrupted and we got ourselves hands on our shotgun which I think I'm gonna use right now to have a shotgun duel with the bastard over here <laughs> my shotgun's bigger than yours <laughs> sorry <coughs> Uh, okay, and the other one is dead. Oh, that's brilliant. No more shooting at Lara, but helpless Lara from up above. You bigots. You think you're so cool all up there. Well, now you're dead, and Lara's alive. Okay, you should have took all her health packs. But you didn't, you bastards. Now you're paying for it with your lives. Okay, this is a bit of an awkward jump, but we did it. I don't believe this guy has any pickup, and let's just break the window like a badass. And we got ourselves hands on a green card this time. Brilliant, so we can just return to the area with two cisterns, and that's brilliant. Okay, and I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to do a running jump here, I'm just not entirely sure if Lara's up to... Oh, that was close. Otherwise I'd have to climb for column in the corner of this huge pool. and. I'd be annoyed with that. 
I believe there is only one enemy waiting for us in this level, so uh, yeah, I guess using a large health pack was kind of a waste, but you know. Think of it as, as candies, you know, and the large health pack is just tastier than the small one. That's the way I look at it anyway. Oh, it's a it's not a health pack, it's 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 a pack lunch or something. Okay. And Yep, as soon as you drop, no time for negligence, this guy will Okay, just Oh thank goodness he hit us once. Uh -huh. Which we still would have survived if you if we used a small health pack. Come on. Laura would be just bleeding to death, horribly. I love it how, no matter how much health she has left, she constantly has the same stamina and endurance and just grow power all around. Okay, and by using the very same switch in this area, we can revert the water flow to its original status. So the first system is empty, but we go around it anyway, just by going like this. And yeah, now we jump into the water and we're gonna get a lovely look at the statistics screen. Now we're not done with this offshore rig yet, we're done with the first level, but there's going to be another level in this rig, which I'm actually looking forward to. Both of these levels are my favorites, really. Okay, just an uh, underwater lever. Don't really see the point, but there we go. Okay, so according to my notes, we should have 20 kills and 3 secrets. Okay, that's absolutely brilliant. So we do have 20 kills and 3 secrets. Took us less than half an hour. And also according to my notes we picked up 31 different items. Which is exactly what I'm aiming for. Okay, awesome. I'll see you guys in the next level.